Hi there, and welcome back. So let's continue. Okay, this is the first, the, the last part of the mix in L1K. So we just run it using a uh, steel with multiple surfaces. Well, what if we use an steel with a single surface? What we can do if we don't use this surface at auto patch now before running? So there is another way using this command auto patch, something similar to surface auto patch. Okay, however, we'll do the splitting. Okay, using the <clears throat> uh, you, you, you using the final mesh. Okay, so you give it like this. You put the angle, and here since this these are the stuff that is strange in open phone. So, in the in using surface auto patch is a large angle. Here should be a small angle. Okay, so it's kind of the complement. They did it like that. So when you split that, you will have the patches will be split automatically in auto one, auto two, zero, three, whatever. Okay, so the smaller the angle, the most the most features the, the that you are going to 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 capture. Okay. So let's try to do this one. Remember that the problem here will be with the boundary layer because you have a single patch so you are going to add also boundary layer in the in inlets and outlets. So if you want to avoid that, you should do the boundary layer addition at the end. So first we do the meshing up to the snapping, we do the splitting, and then we add the boundary layer, okay? So as you go into your case directory, you're going to find all these files. So as you see the files with the name single, mesh single, those are the one that we're going to use. So you have a single script here that is going to run everything. So see here that you have these steps. So in the first step, Look at that, it's, do, it's doing this one mesh, this one. It's only generated the mesh, okay? You have here the steps, and let's run this, this step, okay? So I go here, put it here. Okay, so we have the input file, everything is in the same way, nothing changed, okay? It's running in parallel also. So let's see what, what happens when we get the final mesh. Okay, we have it here. Okay, it, let me use built-in action. So let's get used to use that action. The compose case. Okay, I want to access and see that we have a nice mesh. Everything cool. Remember from the previous case that probably you have some problems here that you can fix. Also, they are here, some issues might be present here, so you can refine there or this pipe. So there is no problem. You can apply the same techniques, okay? And let me add a cut plane. I see that also we apply a refinement normal to the surface. And see that it's also taking this one because you cannot you cannot separate it, okay? The only option the other option would be take to take the other surface there. So you have it there available so you can do it. But what is interesting is that look at here that you don't have access to the patches single. So it is not possible to set boundary conditions or to say that only at boundary layer in this surface. So how do we split this final mesh? So to do that, look at the step that you have a second step, this one. Surface auto patch. So let's see what is happening here. So this one. So see that is simply using this angle. Okay. So overwrite it will write the auction or in your constant polymesh. I'm not going to use just to show you. So see that what happens is I use a large angle. And just to mention that since it's strange, so cat one con uh, polymesh boundary see that you still have one single patch okay so with surface auto patch it was a large value okay 130 50 here if you use that one doesn't happen you need to use a small value so now auto patch one and see that it's telling you that found these patches Okay, and that is how it works. Okay, so it's transparent since that the angles are, are opposite. Okay, so here I'm using 45. So let's see what happens. It's 45. So it should be the same, nothing change. And if I choose a smaller one, see that is detecting more, more patches. So let me open here and just
Okay, and see that here you have all those patches, okay? So I start to do the subdivision. So. Okay, so now, well, you can use create patch to group this or well, that was too slow, but too small, but this is better to use a larger one. So I see that this script is doing that. So let's run now this second step. Okay, so I hope you, you understood what is happening here. Okay, and see that you have the patches. Okay, this patch, see that is empty, zero faces. So this is, doesn't matter. Okay, you, you can erase it. Later in the next step, we use create patch to erase that one. So this is, doesn't matter, it's empty. So you have your four patches. So let's launch. Parafone, okay. I'm working in serial, by the way. Okay, so this also works in parallel, but sometimes to do this operation, so I prefer to work in, in, in serial. So see that you have your patches, so there. So this will be outlet, inlet to uh, pipe, and inlet one. So now you just need to rename them. So how you can rename them, so you just sell that visually in part of you so you can change the name here manually so this one you can erase it and then change the counter to four okay but let's do it automatically okay so to do it automatically we have the next step is this one single surface rename so here's doing the renaming so see the first step single surface rename see that create patch overwrite so it's overwriting and when you have this one clean, and I will show you this step, you don't put anything. What it's going to do, it is going to erase the empty patches, okay? So that is handling that option, okay? It doesn't do any damage. So it's telling you that remove patches with no faces. Okay, so, it's, so as you go back in constant here, you will see that now you don't have that patch anymore, okay? So it, it is harmless, even if you, you, you don't have anything there. So the second one is this one. So rename single. So that one is doing something. So let's see what is doing this one. Create patch, rename single. So it's just changing name. So auto zero is becoming in one, auto one is becoming pipe and so on. Okay, according to what just just saw in, in part of you, okay? So let's run that step. And if I launch again, so remember we're doing sins automatically with create patch. You can do it also manually. And see that now you have the right names there. Okay, so let's see. Inlet one, inlet two, outlet, and your whole pipe. Everything is cool. And now here you see phone dictionary, okay? So this one, we're using this one to change the type, or in this case, to remove this type, the in groups from this dictionary. So there you see how, how, how to use this tool. Okay, so basically it's doing something that, removing these entries here that we don't need it, okay? So there you have the basic no steps how to use it. So for instance, you also want to change the type. See that you can do it like this. This is commented. So you access the file, entry, entry series, just to add, uh, access now the boundaries. Pipe, change the type and set it to wall. Okay, so it means entry zero is this block. Look for pipe and the type and set it to wall. So it will look for this pipe the type and then we'll set it according to what you have there okay so in this case everything is okay let me do this one that is going to raise some stuff there and if i go here i reload see that it raises that one that you have there so at this point we are done so you see that what we did now what we we just did was adjust the boundary and we're ready to run so see that these are the names in the one pi in the two outlet patch 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 wall so what you need to do is go around fish 
uh, you, you can go fishing somewhere in some case the the files up kappa omega whatever you are using temperature raw and put it here and change the names okay so let me go here we're still here no 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 no, no. here so the final one okay so remember that in this case we don't have boundary layer and i didn't you can add it okay there is no problem adding the boundary layer but if you add the boundary layer it will also add it in these patches here so you don't want to add it in those patches you only want want to add it in this one okay just for convenience but for you it's okay add, adding that in there just go ahead and you will have it but now after doing these manipulations and see that we access those patches we can go to this dictionary bl1 and it's simply running a snappy x mesh this specific dictionary where we're setting the boundary layer so as you go there you will see that everything is disabled okay no sorry it's not this is uh bl this one Disable, disable, true, and we're just playing with the auction. So here we're using here relative sizes, false with these auctions. Five ledgers in this ball that exists, and that's all. So let's run this final step. Um, by the way, and then here is transferring the final mesh manually. Okay, so it's, this is equivalent to using over right here. Okay, so it's just to show you also how to do it from the terminal. and copy and off you go so this should be relatively fast and see that super fast a very good coverage okay you have the name of the patches very clean your mesh and let's launch Parafun. and dun, 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 dun. let me go here and see that if we explore here you see that your nice boundary layer and see that we're only adding in this red surface and see that here is you recall the previous case that you were having a problem here so here you just need to refine or probably use a refine a refinement level here in this pipe of force a little bit darker or you can extract this edge there and that will will fix that that problem okay but see that you, we can get similar results, but you can see that it's much easier if you have a, a steel with multiple regions, okay? And also, let's see inside the mesh. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, I don't know why it didn't. Okay, so add this, this. Okay, there you go. And see that we have the boundary layer that. Let me remove the triangulation. And see that it smooth there. Here you have the problem, the collapsing in that small region, but everything, it is okay. So at this point, we are ready to run. Okay, so see that if we go back and just to show you to run this case, the same to run it will be the same the, in the previous one because the names are exactly the same. I didn't change anything. So see that these are the names that we need to use in our boundary conditions, inlet one, pipe, inlet two, outlet. These are the right patches now according to what I'm going to set now numerically. And if you go here, you see that you already have it. So as you go into UMP, see that you have the same names okay and then you have the proper combinations okay for the boundary conditions so for instance inlet one it is a pa patch so for velocity can be many options but this is the one i want fixed value so velocity enter there inlet two is also a patch see inlet three is also a patch put it zero gradient okay for velocity and the pi is a wall is zero 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 when it comes for pressure similar inlet zero gradients both inlet the outlet i fix the pressure and the wall zero gradient so this is my setup for this case 
easy peasy there is no big deal okay and don't get lost so remember that there are many options here don't get lost in all those boundary lay uh, boundary conditions use the most important ones and just to remind you that you are going to find your boundary conditions is you go into your source code okay and should be find a volume and then find a volume and then should be bam 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 no should be fills fb <coughs> fb part field and here so the basic boundary condition these are the constraint uh, the basic one the, the important ones this is the constraint the ones that are the same in boundary and say zero up whatever and then here you have all these data if that you can get lost in this one. So the most important ones, just check here the basic ones. So these are the important ones. Fixed value, zero gradient, calculated, and that's all. For, with those, you can do most of your cases. Sometimes you might need to look here to do some, for something more specific. But that's all, okay? Uh, so also to remind you something that you can go we're ready to run this case here you have the other script to run okay so we're going to run in parallel okay using simple phone so see that we generated the mesh in parallel then we did some operations in serial so we added the boundary layer everything in serial but uh you can do it also in parallel but this is very important when you're going to run always you need to reconstruct the mesh the, your mesh you need to reconstruct it in serial and then you need to transfer what you have in zero with the mesh so always you need to do that this reconstruction you do the mesh in parallel you need to use reconstruct part mesh because then you need to decompose the case with your boundary condition so see here that you use this decompose force Okay, because you erase anything that you have here and now you are transferring mesh and boundary condition. This is very important, okay? Uh, so at this point, let me do something simple phone. So let me go. We're going to use simple phone and remember, rely a lot in phone info. So this is simple phone, okay, the solver and you can also go simple phone minus help will give you a basic help and interesting that here you have these options and I can give you an option a list of boundary conditions and vector boundary conditions that you can use with this solver okay so also if you want to see what are the boundary conditions available with this solver go like this and see that these are vectors boundary conditions that you can use and also you have scalar boundary conditions that you can use so you have all these boundary conditions available so you see that you can get lots of important ones fixed value zero gradient that's all uncalculated and then you have the constraint ones like cyclic NT, or, or or symmetry okay at this point we're ready to run okay so i go run solver the compose move and this see that it's running smoothly, okay? This is it, setting a case from scratch, okay? So the important file probably, I hope you got the point. This is the one that very important. This is the one where you need to set names and type. As soon as you have that one, go into zero and set up your boundary conditions here, okay? And that's all, okay? So let's wait a little bit. This case should be very fast. Well, actually, it's going to run 100 iterations, but I think it converts first. So see that after 93 iterations, the simulation converts. And now that we have a solution, which is in parallel, we can use build int decompose case. And see that we go to the latest time. Let me add. Okay, first, see that this is the pressure at the walls. Remember, it's relative pressure and divided by density and velocity field. At the walls is zero by def definition, and see that you have inlets and outlets, and here you have there the behavior. And if I put a cut plane, here you have your behavior. Here you can see the iterative convergence, okay? Nice solution there. 
Okay, let me add another cut plane. So now I want. Yeah, there is okay. See that? And there, let me change the fill. Let me use you and see the here how the two strings are mixing. So that's it. Okay, this is all for this case. I hope you understood well you know, how to use the Snappy X mesh. It can be a little bit tricky, but important thing is that don't enter in, in panic with this input dictionary that you have that one that commented, no, the annotated one that many options. Okay, just use the ones that were giving you, okay, that they are very clean and remember the things that you need to read. Read in the geometry. Then set up the refinement levels, that's all. Okay, the auctions use the recommended ones and then here the snack controls. Use the recommended auction. I can guarantee you that 95% of the times they are okay. If they are not okay, just follow the steps that you have in the slides. And then to add the boundary layer, I recommend you to do it by a step. First, get a good snap mesh and then use the restarting method and play around with the auctions to get your boundary layer. And very important, do not use refinement levels more than four because likely that is going to give you problems with the boundary layer. So I'm going to show you later an additional case, a little bit how to control that block mesh. Okay, so that's all for this case. Thank you very much for your attention. See you in the next videos. Bye.